There's always more room to grow. There's always more knowledge to gain, always more skills to perfect. We're never done with the education process because education is part of the path to wealth. Education and learning is part of the path to health. Continued education can turn you around if you're headed in the wrong direction. We need the mental food that others provide. We need mental exercise. We need to open up our minds to different alternatives. We need to learn to appreciate the other side of the debate so that we can strengthen our own and defend our own. We need to expose ourselves to a wide range of thoughts and philosophies and ideologies. You've got to listen to a variety of speakers, read a variety of books. No one speaker has all the answers for you. No one book has all the answers. You can't get all the answers from one person. We need a variety of influence to give us input, to give us ideas, to manage our business, to manage our relationships, to manage our finances, to take advantage of our time. We need a variety of influences. We need a variety of books in our library. We need a variety of tapes in our video library, our audio library. We need a variety of voices. And here's what else we need. We need a variety of points of view. Points of view can be so valuable. Somebody says, did you ever see it from over here? And you say, no. So you step over there where they are and you take a look back over here from their point of view. And you say, my gosh, I never thought from this perspective. It's so different. No wonder you think the way you do. Here's the clue. Take advantage of all that's available in terms of mental food and mental exercise. Be eager to learn. Always be eager to learn, no matter how far along you are in the journey, no matter where you are in your success. Keep that eagerness to learn. Gather up as much knowledge as you can. And then what? Debate it. Put it all on the table and look at it. Dissect it. Turn it around and stare at it. Ask questions, make statements. Don't take it for granted that one person has all the answers you're looking for. Take their knowledge, but don't take it as the only knowledge. Make sure that what you finally do, the model you develop of strong appreciation for your own style and your own methods and your own process for achievement, make sure that what you finally do is a product of your own conclusion. That's what's valuable. Not to just go do what someone says without debating it. Consider the source and then do it your way. You can take an interest in what someone says, digest it, take notes on it, but then debate it, look at it from all angles. Be a student, not a follower. Building your ambition is a process unique to each and every one of us. Gather all the knowledge that you can. Then develop your approach as a product of your own conclusions. Your own conclusions, not someone else's conclusions. Your own conclusions. You can't fall for other people's philosophies. They may not be right. As you collect knowledge, you must sort through it and find out what's valuable. Then you can develop your own philosophy. And your own philosophy becomes the most important of your guidance systems one of your guiding lights. So develop your own plan, lest you get into trouble with someone else's. And debate the plans of others, the philosophies of others, the achievement styles of others, the way others appreciate themselves. Debate all this. Why? Because it affects everything. The value you place on your plan, the value you place on yourself, the value you place on life in general, affects everything around you. It even affects how you respect time, the 24 hours a day given to each of us to do with as we please. There's a connection between appreciating yourself and appreciating and respecting time. People who appreciate themselves understand and respect the use of time. Here's what I call the best kept secret of the rich. Interesting discovery that I made one day 
I couldn't believe it when I found out that rich people have about 24 hours a day and poor people have about 24 hours a day. Wouldn't that drive you mad until you found out what the difference was? I'm telling you the difference is in the management of the time. A few simple disciplines practiced every day and your whole life can change. Your future can change. Your income can change. You can learn from negative as well as positive. The Bible is such a great book because it is a collection of human stories on both sides of the ledger. One list of human stories is called examples. Do what these people did. And the other list of human stories is called warnings. Don't do what these clods did. What a wealth of information. What to do and what not to do. I think it also means, however, that if your story ever gets in somebody's book, make sure they use it as an example, not a warning. All the successful people I know and work with around the world are good readers. They just read, read, read. They are so curious that they are driven to read because they just have to know. It is one of the things they all have in common. Here's a good phrase. All leaders are readers. And they use cassette programs too, especially while they're in the car or during other times when they can't read. Cassettes can help all of us easily pick up new ideas and new skills. Did you know there are cassettes and books on how to be stronger, more decisive, a better speaker, a more effective leader, have a better effect on other people, become more loving, develop personality, get rich, develop influence, become sophisticated, and people don't use them? How would you explain that? Did you know that hundreds of successful people have written their stories in books and told how they did it on cassettes like this and people don't want to listen? How would you explain that? The guy's busy, I guess. He says, well, yeah, if you worked where I work, by the time you struggle home, it's late. You've got to have a bite to eat, watch a little TV and get to bed. You can't stay up half the night and read, read, read. And this is the guy that's behind on his bills. He's a good worker, hard worker, sincere. But remember, you can be sincere and work hard all your life and wind up broke, confused and embarrassed. You've got to be better than a good worker. You've got to be a good reader, a good listener. At least he could hear a good cassette on the way home, right? Now, you don't have to read or listen to educational cassettes half the night. Although if you're broke, it's a good place to start. But here is all I ask, just 30 minutes a day. That's all. Stretch it to an hour if you can, but at least 30 minutes. Hear or read something challenging, something instructional, at least 30 minutes a day. And here's the next key. Every day, don't miss. Miss a meal, but not your 30 minutes. Hey, you can get along without some meals, but you can't get along without some ideas, examples, and inspiration. There's a Bible phrase that says humans cannot live on bread alone or food alone. It says the next most important thing to bread is words. Words nourish the mind. Words nourish the soul. Humans have to have food and words to be healthy and prosperous. Make sure you have a good diet of words every day. I told my staff one day some people read so little they have rickets of the mind. And also remember to properly feed the mind, you must have good balance. Don't just read or listen to the easy stuff. You can't live on mental candy. Here is a thought. Why not call good books and cassettes tapping the treasure of ideas? That's it. Tapping the treasure of ideas, like you're doing with this program. And if somebody's got a good excuse for not tapping the treasure of ideas for at least 30 minutes every day, or spending the money and getting the books and cassettes. I'd like to hear it. Invest the money. Get the cassettes and books. The best money you can spend is money invested in your self-education. Don't shortchange yourself when it comes to investing in your own better future. Mr. Shof got me started on my library when I first met him. He said to me, become self-educated. Standard education will get you standard results. Check those numbers and see if that's what you want. And if it isn't, if you want something better than standard, 
you must become self-educated. So I went to work on my library, and I now have one of the best. Shelf recommended a couple of books in particular to get me started. Now, I had a Bible, that's 66 books, so that was a pretty good start, and my parents saw to it that I had a good study of the Bible. But the first book Mr. Shove told me to get was the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. If you don't already have it, it's a great one to add to your library. Earl Nightingale has put it on cassette. The title should intrigue you, Think and Grow Rich. I read it several dozen times. Shove said repetition is the mother of skill. And if you could have seen my bank account at the time, you would have known I needed lots of that kind of repetition. Some of the ideas in that book made major changes in my life. As I look back now, the book was worth thousands, and I bought it for pennies. I learned a very valuable lesson. There can be a great deal of difference between cost and value. Before I met Mr. Shof, I used to ask, how much does it cost? After I met him, however... I soon learned to ask, how much is it worth? I started basing my life on worth instead of cost, and everything changed. The next book he recommended I get was a book on nutrition. Shelf said, study nutrition. Vitality plays an important part in doing well. Some people don't do well because they don't feel well. It's not that they're not intelligent, it's that they're ill. They don't have the fire and the vitality to do well. So he really got on me about nutrition. Now, some of those health books are a bit weird, but you can separate out the weird stuff. There are cassettes on nutrition too. Remember, don't be a follower, be a student. Someone says, I read this book, should I follow? And the answer is no, read at least two books and make up your own mind. Don't be a follower, be a student. So take care of yourself. There's a Bible phrase that says, many times the spirit is willing, but the body's weak. So you have to work on both. You wake up in the morning and the mind says, let's go get them. And the body says, I can't even get out of bed. So work on your health. A person's library of books and cassettes reveals his or her most dominant desires. It's interesting to walk into someone's house and browse through the library. What does your library say about you? So read all the books. Now here's good news. You don't have to read them all at once. Try this. Two books a week in 10 years is a thousand books. If you read a thousand books in the next 10 years, do you think they would greatly influence all the dimensions of your life? The answer is, of course. Well, here's what's exciting. It's only two books a week. However, I would suggest if you haven't read two books a week for the last 10 years, you are about a thousand books behind. Can you imagine the incredible disadvantage it will be 10 years from now to stride into the marketplace a thousand books behind? For some confrontations, you won't be a match. And for some opportunities, your knowledge will be too lacking. For some values, your philosophy will be too shallow. Missing skills, missing knowledge, missing insights, missing values, missing lifestyle. It could happen if you don't read the books. Remember, the book you don't read won't help. Let me give you three ways to find out how to change anything. Any life direction, any dimension. Here's three ways to find out how to change anything. Number one is to read. Become a good reader. All of the successful people I know and work with around the world, they're all good readers. Curiosity drives them to read. They got to know. They just read, 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 read. Become a good reader. Now, that's my opinion. Listen to the other lecturers and listen to me and make up your own mind. Don't be a follower. Be a student. Okay, I say, really, for life change, you got to read. One way to learn is from your own experiences. But another way to learn is from other people's experiences. See, one book might save you five years if you read it. 
Did you know there's books on how to be stronger, more decisive, be a speaker, be a leader, have a better effect on other people, develop your personality. Did you know there's books on that? And people don't read them. How would you explain that? And they can read. Did you know that hundreds of successful people have written their stories in books and they wrote down how they did it and people don't read it? How would you explain that? The guy's busy, I guess. You know, you get tied up. The guy says, well, yeah, you work where I work, but the time you struggle home, it's late. You got to eat a bite of supper, watch a little TV, get to bed. You can't sit up half the night reading, 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 reading. And the guy's behind on his car payment. Good worker, hard worker, sincere. But you got to be better than sincere and work hard. Otherwise, at the end of your life, you'll wind up cold, stony broke. You got to be better than a good worker. You got to be a good reader. Get around successful people and listen. Now, you can also learn from unsuccessful people. Take notes on both, negative and positive. On the negative, the notes are called what not to do. And you got to learn what not to do as well as what to do. So learn from the negative as well as the positive. Okay? Find out what poor people read and don't read it. Right? That's good information. Learn from the negative. But now you can also learn from the positive. Get around successful people. Listen to what they say. Listen to how they say it. It's important. We've all got about 16 waking hours. Practice listening those 16 hours. And I say practice listening because listening isn't easy. I found out it's easier to talk than it is to listen. But if you will practice listening the 16 hours you're awake, sure enough, from surprising sources comes great ideas. In sales training, we teach, if you want to learn sales, listen to the kids. Kids have got to be the master salespeople of all time. They have no equal. Father tells his young son, no, you cannot have an ice cream cone. 30 minutes later, he's licking on one. <laughs> That'd be 30 minutes worth listening to. They got moves you wouldn't believe. Persistence runs deep like the ocean. And the kids never took a class on how to overcome objections. <laughs> they already know how. They don't need classes. You tell kids no. That goes right on by. <laughs> they give you three good reasons. Just say no. It goes right on by. They give you three more. They're masters. So listen and learn. Now, here's some of the best advice I've got for the whole evening. It won't get any better than this. This is it. Poor people ought to take rich people out to dinner and listen. That's some of the best I got. If a guy's not doing well, one of the first things he ought to do is find a guy that is doing well and offer to buy him his dinner. Spend 50, 60, 80, 100 dollars. Go for the full nine course. Start him on the juices and hors d'oeuvres. Get him started talking. The salad takes 15 minutes. Keep it rolling. Biggest steak in town takes 45. Keep it rolling. Pour on the dessert. Stretch that meal out about two hours. If you get a successful person to eat and talk for two hours, they're liable to drop ideas in your lap. Change your life. Multiply your income by two, by three, by five. But you're right. Poor people don't usually take rich people out to dinner. That's the problem. The guy said he's rich, let him buy his own dinner. I'm not coming up with any money. <laughs> and he says, besides, you work where I work, but the time you struggle home, it's late. You're lucky to get your own supper, let alone run around trying to find a rich man to feed. And the guy's behind on his house payment. Good worker, hard worker, sincere. But you got to be better than sincere, work hard. You wind up broke. You got to be better than a good worker. You got to be a good listener. And remember what you read and what you hear 
put the good stuff in your journal. Now, here's the third way to find out how to change your life. And that's to observe. You can pick up a lot of ideas just by watching. Get around successful people and watch. Here's why. Success leaves clues. Watch how the man shakes hands. Watch how the lady responds. People who do well do certain things over and over and over and over. And if you're clever, you can pick them up. Watch it all. If a guy's making $10,000 a month, I'd watch how he walks. Maybe that's it. Copy his funny little walk. Somebody says, well, that's kind of a silly walk. Say, it's 10000 I haven't got the money yet, but I got the walk. It's bound to start somewhere. What I ask you tonight is to be unusual and be a good observer of what's going on. You can pick up ideas that can change your life starting tomorrow. Just be a more careful observer. Now, remember, there's two ways to see. One is called sight. See with your eyes. The other one is called insight. See with your mind. See with your eyes, you'll see things. See with your mind, you'll see answers. Put your eyes and your mind to work. And the best advice on developing sight and insight is pay attention. Don't miss anything. In the weekend seminar we teach, one of the greatest fatalities to success is preoccupation, lack of concentration. The guy's mind wanders. See, you wind up average. You've got to learn to zero in and concentrate. I read a good article one time, Reader's Digest. The title was, Wherever You Are, Be There. Excellent. Don't miss anything.
Cause you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey As you fade away, as you fade away Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Gotta build up on my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way I can see the way you look at me, I'm such a disgrace I never really asked to be brought into this place You wanna love me? Well then baby, have a taste All the highs and the lows no, you'll never be the same I don't really wanna hurt you But I can't control the pain If you're sticking by my side Maybe we could be okay Okay, okay Maybe you could be the change I need today I promise that I'm never fell this way I really hope that you Will choose to stay Through all the pain I know you told your friend You're not okay And tell me what's wrong And why you never said You felt that way Cause you're trying to stay strong